Hey, everybody. Welcome to the YouTube Lead Gen Show with Christina Smallhorn and myself, Malcolm Lawson. Christina and I have generated tens of millions of views on YouTube, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, most importantly, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of commission from leads we generated from our real estate YouTube channels. And on this show, we mastermind about using YouTube in our real estate businesses. Christina, how the heck are you today? I'm good. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. Everything looks freaking dandy, you know? Fantastic. <laughs> Glad to hear it. My channel's sinking, but yeah, you know, I'm doing all right. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk about that. Um, I kind of want to pick your brain about my channel as well. So let's talk about your channel. You said you're, you were trying some new buckets of content. Is that right? Yeah. So um, I had this... Uh, like a playlist bucket, whatever you want to call it. That was like five lies. So I do, I would do five lies about buying a home, five lies about um, manufactured homes, five lies. I mean, I, it was like, like a series and it always, mm -hmm. that was like, kind of like my bread and butter content. You know, it wouldn't get millions of views. A couple of those videos did, but it always was something that lifted up my channel. Last couple of videos I've done from that specific playlist have done crap. Crap. So I was like, all right. And then the, another one, I was like costly mistakes, the costly mistakes of blah, blah, blah. That was another playlist of content that I was doing. And it's I like my last two videos. I think they have 7,000 views. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that that may sound like a lot to some people, but really that's, it's I mean, with 150,000 subscribers. Yeah. I guess you'd expect a lot more than that. Yeah, the, the, I want. I do want to point something out because somebody said, "Oh, I saw a channel that has six hundred fifty thousand subscribers. They must be making really serious bank in comparison to you." And I said, "Well, it has to do with the views, yeah, right." So I go to that specific channel. Yeah, they had six hundred fifty thousand subscribers, but they don't even have thirty days of a million views, and I have more than that. So. Yeah. So what? They have 650,000 subscribers. They're not getting in the views. It doesn't, it isn't I, yeah. level out the same. I was looking at Peter McKinnon's channel a while mm -hmm. ago. And so he's got 5.5 million subscribers. So mm -hmm. you, in, intuitively you think like, man, he must get like millions of views per video. Mm -hmm. But no, his, his videos, a lot of them still get below 200,000 views on them, even though mm -hmm. he has 5.5 million subscribers. Right. Right. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty common. Even like Daryl Eves, I think he has 600,000 subscribers and some of his videos get like 20,000 views on them. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's pretty common. Um, you were talking about this the other day that you want to make content for your non subscribers, not your subscribers. Is that right? Well, okay. So here's the thing I was, I'm taking a picture for a friend of mine because she was calling me. <laughs> um, here's the thing. So most people, when you're making content, if you look at your views, it always comes from non-subscribers, right? So yeah. the majority, the bulk of your views comes from non-subscribers. So somebody had said, you say a lot of the same things in every single video. Well, that's because most of the people that are probably going to watch that video are non-subscribers. And you'll see that in the comments like, oh, this is the first time I found your channel. Or, this is the first time. So you, even though you're repeating a lot of the same things in your videos, when it comes to like, if you start talking about one specific thing and I'll just give manufactured homes, uh, the, uh, you know, that's, that would be one of those things. So people always get it messed up between modular and manufactured. I describe the difference between modular and manufactured in every single video when I'm talking about modular homes, because I know the majority of the people that are watching are non-subscribers or or at least this is the first time they've seen my content. So I try to reiterate a lot of things that are common misconceptions. And that's, you have to think about that. You know, you have to think about that every time you make a video, you know, like some people even say, well, I already did a video on that. Right. Well, if you, if you only got 500 views on it and you already did a video on it, redo it. Cause I mean, <laughs> it's like yeah. redo some, that video, redo some, a title. Sometimes it can be almost the exact same content. It's just packaged in a different way. Mm -hmm. One packaging with your 500 views, another one with your 500,000 views, mm -hmm. just by packaging pretty much the same stuff over again. Somebody like Graham Stephan, I mean, you know, his content is, it's all the same stuff over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of times for like, you know, how to invest or how to save money. It's, it's the same exact stuff. It's just packaged from a different angle and packaged a different way. And also I'd say that, psychologically like sometimes we need to hear something multiple times before mm -hmm. it really sinks in before we really like accept that i think it's okay to kind of repeat have some overlapping content like that 
Well, I, I did get a comment one day that was like, you just say the same thing in every single video. And I, I told him, I said, well, thank you for watching every single video. I yeah. <laughs> so, you know, like, I don't know. People are just, people are funny. I, I get the, I get the more, more troll comments than any human being on the planet. I mean, I, honestly, Malcolm, how many troll comments do you get about your appearance? Like about your eyebrows, your hair, your skin color, your uh, lips, your anything? Right. Like how many comments do you get like that? Not a lot right now. When I was in the <laughs> military and I was clean shaven and had a really like high and tight, I used to get some comments, but not a lot now. Uh, none actually, almost none. Yeah, I get them every single video, every yeah. single one. I got uh, like, cause my hair is like more purple now. And because and I liked it, I, I had made a mistake and I made my hair purple once and I was like, oh, I kind of like that. And uh, so I made it purple again. And somebody's like, oh, geez, why is your hair purple? Why do women do this to themselves? They make themselves look ridiculous. And I was like, <laughs> I just I, I was like laughing because I'm like, what makes you think that my hair color has? I just wrote so sorry. Uh, I didn't know my hair color had an effect, a negative effect on your life. That's all I wrote. And everybody else in the comment section after that brutalized them. But <laughs> I just, it's so weird to me that people feel so compelled that they have to get on their keyboard and be like, blah, 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 you know? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, yeah, like, like that really makes a difference. I, now you have a little bit of an older audience, right? Yeah, yeah. So my, um, I think, it's like 55, like 47 ish to 56 is, is my highest. My second highest is that 56 to 65. So mm -hmm. yeah, you know, but I'm, I'm happy for that because they spend more money on those people on ads because they'll buy more crap off the internet. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, yeah. I noticed that. Um, and that, that is another factor in like how much money you make off of YouTube it, is how are you monetizing it? And if you're, mainly getting AdSense revenue, like stuff like real estate and finances and cryptocurrencies, the, the ads are much higher. They pay much more. The advertisers pay much more to run those ads. So you what, make more money off that. Why do you think me, Kevin does like three videos a day? <laughs> he just, he's just hammering it, hammering it, hammering it. Yeah. I think he's kind of losing it though. Cause he's like, every time I turn around, he's like a different hair color. And <laughs> I think he just doesn't he give exhausted. a fuck anymore. That's yeah. what I think. He's he like, looks uh, he looks exhausted though. He, I mean, I like he looks like he's burning the candle on both ends. He was showing his portfolio and he's got like $40 million invested in all these different things. Like once you get to that point, like you, you just don't give a fuck anymore. You can do whatever the heck you want. Yeah. You can run for governor if you want to, you know, did. that didn't yeah. work out for him, but you know, yeah, good on him. Good on him. He's super young. He's made a shit ton of money. Oops. Poop ton of money. <laughs> and he hustles. Yeah, he hustles. And, he hustles. Yeah. and he's you know? uh, he's out there every day making more content, you know. I like, mean, what is enough enough though? Like at some point, when would you when do you say, you know what, I've made all this at this point. Maybe I should go do something else. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Like that would be I'm I'm curious. Like, when is enough enough? And for somebody like him, like once you get to that level then you have to start bringing on other people in sort of having your channel more of a, a network and you have all their shows on your channel. I've seen several people doing that and like removing them from the actual content. Yeah. But then it wouldn't be meet Kevin, right? you know, like he is the brand. So I, I don't know how you would do that. I mean, I guess you could have as many guests on as possible. You know, there's a guy, uh, the King of random. Do you remember his channel? Mm -mm. He used to do a bunch of like weird little like science gadget, science experiments and stuff. And he did that. He brought some young people on and started doing videos with them. And eventually he just kind of stepped away after a year or so. And uh, they took over his channel. Well, I mean, like, okay. So, uh, you know, Mr. Beast, let's just give an example. He is the channel, right? Yeah. But he always has his cohorts, you know, behind there, his little minions that do all this stuff with him. I mean, do you think someone could take over Mr. B's channel? I mean, he obviously knows what content works for YouTube. And he also has like that, those little minions have their own channels. And every time they put out a video, it's like 23 million views. So he knows the strategy that works. Right. Could, do you think he could just create his own little network of people that he just siphons off their money? I mean, I don't know what he's doing. I'm just, this is- just I think a, he could. I think he could have a series on his channel Mm -hmm. run by one chris or kyle whatever their names are like carl, they, carl. maybe they could carl. They make, 
<laughs> maybe they could do like a behind the scenes making of one of his videos and they do more of a blog blog style. I, I don't know. Oh, I, wow. I, I, I see it a lot in the cryptocurrency space where it'll be, you know, starts off with uh, one guy's YouTube channel and then he starts having other people. And now he has like two or three shows on that one network. You said that one magic word that's going to allow every single spammer on a, on the planet to go to this video and start. Oh no, the C word. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell you right now, like the, that is a huge problem, and I don't know how to curtail it. It's oh, so bad. Cryptocurrency spammers, and yeah. they'll give, they'll mock my YouTube channel, like they'll. Uh, mock my icon or whatever and they'll say like admin for christina yeah. song or something like that and they're like christina wants to get a hold of you you know text her here I'm like i i and i don't i have to put out a post at least once a month saying that i'm not it's not this isn't true this isn't i'm not doing this you know yeah all the all those channels um are having the exact same issue youtube needs to crack down on that that's entirely on youtube right there but how they do it how well, do they okay. fix it so okay I guess, I guess there's a couple of different things like creating a spoof account is a little bit different but like there's one thing that goes on where somebody comments and then instantly there's like 40 comments below and everybody's like recommending oh you got to talk to this guy he's an expert at investing he made me millions or some crazy stuff and it's obviously bots it's like 40 comments in a row oh yeah like have you heard of gene uh yeah. gene uh russell yeah i've heard of gene russell he was the best he got my uh portfolio all cleaned up oh i should really get information about gene russell that gene russell sounds really good you know like yeah i've seen those little things so before but, we jump into some people's channels i, I want to ask you a question so i i just signed back up for tubebuddy for the mm -hmm. ab testing feature mm -hmm. um and I did that like months ago and I did it enough to where I figured out my buckets, what worked best for each of my buckets. But now I'm introducing two new buckets. So I started doing the AB feature again, just to really figure out what works best for those. Are you still using the AB feature on TubeBuddy? Do you still do that kind of stuff on your channel at this point? So what I do is like, I'll take a playlist that I already have, right? And, and then there's an average CTR for that bucket, right? For that playlist and I will put out a video and if I can see you can see really quickly what the uh CTR is in each traffic source and if it's above or below average for that specific thumbnail so that's I just do it through YouTube I mean it's a lot easier to do it through TubeBuddy there's no doubt about it you just let them you know you set it and forget it but you know because I look at this as more of my job now, you know, so yeah. I'm, I'm hyper uh, focused on what YouTube is telling me, not a third party app. And it's not, th there's nothing wrong with two buddies uh, system. And it's a great, like I did that AB testing for two years, you know, it really did help to improve uh, my thumbnail. I'm just really like, I'm following it every hour on the hour. You know, most okay. people aren't doing that. Yeah, and I guess there's really like two different ways to do like A-B testing. One's kind of like what you're talking about when you first upload a video and you watch it for the first like 12 hours and you're kind of testing things out to see if it works. Mm -hmm. and, and then the other one is like doing A-B testing on really old videos just to see is does white font or yellow font work as mm -hmm. a face or no face work. And then when you do your next video, you kind of know what, what's best for that. And so and that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing a new two new buckets and uh, I'm trying to figure out right now what is the best thumbnail style, what is the best titles for these buckets of content. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. Two new buckets. That's, that's always exciting. I'll tell you what TubeBuddy is like really, really good with is like if you have like you have a bunch of links that are expired or you've changed out some links or you have a new website and you have to you're like, oh my God, I'm going to have to go through every single video. You can bulk do that through TubeBuddy. <laughs> they, have, yeah. they have all these things to make your life so much easier because they can do everything in bulk. You know, TubeBuddy, uh, I will say, organizes your life. <laughs> that's that's what TubeBuddy does. It organizes your life. I, so I haven't done that yet. So does that erase your entire description on all those videos and replaces them? with one like standard description? Yeah, so um, I'm really bad at explaining things when it comes to that kind of stuff. So 
there is multiple videos on TubeBuddy, and this is not like me plugging TubeBuddy, even though I do have an affiliate link roaming around somewhere. But um, you like they have a bunch on their channel that tells you how to do it. There's a person in this group. Her name is Shelly Saves the Day. She works for TubeBuddy. And oh, cool. so if we want to talk to her about YouTube or TubeBuddy's features and all the things that TubeBuddy wants to do, let me know in the comment section and I can have her come on here because she's one of the nicest, best people that I know on the planet. So <laughs> let's we can get we can get her on here. And I'll, in that in another thing, like she is in this group. She's been in this group forever and she's never like pushing her product. You know, she knows she works for a great company, but she's not like spammy McSpammy, you know, trying to do that and i i i'm the first one now if it smells like spam yeah. you're out of here <laughs> other do you know that we're at six thousand we're at six thousand members right now isn't that wild i love it and i and i like we could be at twelve thousand if we kept every single person right. that came comes in here but i i will look at your profile and if your profile has this big spammy thing saying you know oh work with our company and we'll, you know, get your website to over blah, blah, blah. You know, I, that's it. You're out. If you just opened your profile five minutes ago and you decided to join this group, you're out. Like, I'm not letting you in. If you <laughs> like, if you are no other real estate groups and you just decided to join this one, I'm like, no, not going to have you come in, you know? Um, yeah. Look at that. We've really uh, just exploded recently. Oh, no. Well, I talk about us a lot. You know, yeah. I do talk about us in places. I don't know if you're on um, Clubhouse, but I talk about our group all the time because I'm like, we give all the greatest information for free. We help each like everybody in this group is so awesome because we really, truly help one another out. I mean, is every post epic? Absolutely not. But we have I think we have a really good group that is really trying to help one another. And that's what I've always wanted it to be. Because I mean, there's so many of these, like, in order to be a part of our group, you're either going to have to pay or in order for our, you to be a part of our group, you know, like, there's always like one person that posts a bunch of stuff, but it's because they want you to sign up for their program. Right. It's like, this group sucks. You know, <laughs> like, there's so many crap groups on Facebook. And this one is like, the bomb diggity bomb. Yeah, I, like I think we, we've, we've done a pretty good job of fostering like a good community here, mm -hmm. right? And um, like I think we got a good culture. Yeah, we got a good culture in this group. It's nice and fun. It's light. Um, it's not everybody sharing their links just to get views and likes on their videos. Yeah, we never had to, and we never allowed that. That was no. a big giant no no. And some people got mad. They got yeah. really mad. And if they do post it, well, you, I automatically say. All right. I know that you posted this link. Was there a specific reason that you posted this link? Right. Is there something you wanted to know? And if they don't answer within uh, a day, then I'm like, okay, not only did you not answer because you don't care, but you're also kicked out of the group because you're just spamming. So goodbye. You know? Yeah. Sometimes I'm people, people will post it in here and like, hey, can I get some feedback? And they don't quite know the culture yet. So like a little yeah. tolerant on them. But yeah, you can clearly... It, there's nothing that drives me more crazy than a real estate agent uploads like a listing video to his business page and then just shares it in our group with no context or anything. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, man? Mm -hmm. what, what, uh, it's uh, not, this nice. isn't the bragging place. <laughs> this <Yeah>. is a <laughs> other groups for that. How yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, do you think there's a time limit on changing your thumbnail to get a boost? I, I, for you. Yeah. I think for uh, 48 hours after that 48 hours and it has it like hit the train a uh, running, just pick, pick one that did the best and throw it out there. Cause I, I mean, my life, my video last week, I changed the title. I changed the thumbnail, like, I don't know, four, five times. And then I, I like, now it's kind of like, whatever. I don't even care anymore. It's, it's dead in the water as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> whatever. And how long, so let's say you upload a video, how long do you give it until you maybe try a different thumbnail, a different title? Well, I can tell within the first, I don't know, 30 minutes. Yeah. Like if I'm not, if it's not a thousand views within an hour, there's something wrong. And so then I'll change the thumbnail. And if that doesn't do the trick, I'll change the thumbnail again. And then I start like reaching out to my friends uh, that I know, like I have a, a little small group of girls that I know and I'm like, Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And, uh, so we will, we'll go back and forth and then, um, I'll throw that thumbnail all up one more time. And then if they feel like the title needs to be tweaked, I'll do it one more time. And then after that, if it doesn't do it, then it does 
whatever. I tried, I put in the hard effort. It's time to focus on the next one. Time to move on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes, sometimes they don't stick. <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes sometimes. Uh -huh. you, you jamming out to some music over there? No, I, I like, honestly, my whole life I've done this thing where I, um, I've always tried to control my ADHD, you know, <laughs> like, so I'm always like grabbing onto things. Like I'm, I would hold onto a coffee cup and everything else. And now I've kind of, after 2020 and into 2020, I've learned to embrace <laughs> my nuts. Just dancing, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm just, wait, wait, wait. I'm just trying to get some energy out, man. I'm sitting down. Yeah. I mean, people could just know I'm absolutely insane and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Patrice says, Malcolm, I followed your video on structure for creating YouTube channel trailer. I love how it turned out. Thanks for the great tips. Straightforward and to the point. Thank you. I like yeah, straightforward absolutely. to the point. I'm, I'm, I'm that person too. <laughs> yeah. She's testing in hours and I test for weeks. Laugh out loud. I'm a, a peasant. Well, I mean, but the thing is, is you start somewhere, you know, like I, I, I mean, when I was really getting into it, I was like, why isn't this working? I would. Yeah. freak over it for a week or whatever but i'm um, usually I, I have to focus on the next video like it, you know i if right. i i would make myself crazy if i didn't do that because my brain works like compartmentalized so once that video like i've done everything i could possibly do i have to focus on the next one if i'm thinking about this one this next one's not going to be great you know and, and so when a video first uploads and we're, we're testing out maybe thumbnails and titles are you going off of the click through rate or off of the views for the video? What do you look at? You think it's both, both, you know, like if, if the, I, I know what, what the average views per hour should be for that specific playlist. Right. So if that isn't a meeting or exceeding that there's a problem and I mm -hmm. need to fix it. Um, so, I mean, I don't always win. I don't always win. I try, but I don't always win. I mean, even the 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 most uh, wonderful YouTubers in the world, um, with the exception of a few, there are some that just they they'll put out a video and it just isn't going to hit it, you know. And they could have five million subscribers and they put out this video and it doesn't. It isn't right for their audience. It isn't right for the algorithm. And it could have been the bomb, most bomb diggity bomb video ever. Great title, great thumbnail, everything. And it just didn't work. Right. I mean, you have to move on. You know, you I, can't yeah. linger on it. And if that didn't work and you loved it that much, redo it. Redo the video, redo the thumbnail, redo the title, redo it. If yeah. you if you have that much passion for it. I agree. Yeah, you just got to package it. It, it. it comes down to the packaging, you know, maybe mm -hmm. you, that angle that you took on it just didn't really resonate with people for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. It could have been as simple as a hook. I was I helped uh, yeah. review some channels yesterday um, and the girls, uh, I mean, she just had a, a hook that didn't work. It was disconnected to what she was um, making. And it, like she's talking about food and it didn't show a like she was talking about chewy marshmallows, right? So she didn't really show a chewy marshmallow. She showed them being made on the plate and everything else. But you, like to me, I want to see like the stretch and the goo of a, a marshmallow thing. Simple things. And you'd learn those simple things over time. Yeah. Are we looking at somebody's channel? You keep popping this channel up. We, I'm getting things organized. <laughs> okay. Dude, I mean, I didn't know if you're just like totally amped. Like, let's I, just that's, shut that's up, my ADD. I'm, just, I'm, I'm just clicking buttons over here. Oh, okay. My ADD is clicking in. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think you're right. Like, I, so I, I finally hired an editor and I started hi hiring an editor. And I have to like work with him on his editing though, because like the first 30 seconds, it's like nothing but talking head. I'm like, no, no, come on, man. You have to put the B roll up front. If I'm talking about something, put that B-roll up front. And a lot of YouTubers, they have a lot more cuts and edits at the start of the videos and a lot less at the end of it, just to kind of get their attention. What's up? I do that. That's exactly yeah. what If you look at my first 30, that first minute of my video, there is a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a lot more just talking head towards the end, you know? Um, but I, I like, I pack as much editing in that first minute as possible. Yeah, it, I, it's a I hot it's a mess. Strategy. <laughs> like there, there's an auditory hook that you have to you have to hook them with your words. We also have to like visually hook them as well as well at the same time. 
Uh-huh. And uh, and I hired this like YouTube editor and I had to explain this to him. Like, bro, it's like a minute before there's a first B-roll or anything. Come on, gotta, gotta make it a little bit more punchy at the start there. And I always find, and, and people could argue with me about this, but people that hire an editor immediately, they're like, I, you know, I'm a real estate agent. I don't know how to edit. I hired somebody to do it. They do a great job. And then I go to their videos and it's not a great job. They think it's a great job because they don't know how to edit, you know, and they're, and they're not studying how other people are doing it. But to them, they're like, oh, this looks, this looks fine. It looks great. And it's usually, it looks to me like a Fiverr job, you know, and, and then, then, and then to the audience who's familiar and adapted to YouTube content, they're like, what's going on with this video? Why does it look like my teenage son edited it? You know, like they, they know, you know, they yeah. know. Mm-hmm. I, um, yeah, so I'm only really having him do really like simple, basic talking head videos that I trust him with. And there's like a very formal, there's a formula to these very simple videos. Mm-hmm. Um, but even just having him edit those, you know, maybe two of those a month, like that's freeing up my time. I filmed a video the other day that I'm really excited about. I think it could be a million view video. And like, I'm taking that project on. I don't want to outsource that. I'm, that one's holding that one a little close up my heart there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be working on that. So if you have a video like that that you really have put your like heart and soul in, this is what I would I suggest to do if you want to work with an editor. I would put it in the order that you want it to be put in. Like you put it on that timeline in the order that you want it to be in. Send it over to them. Have them kind of take out the O's, the ums, the, you know, like kind of take out the fluff and utter within that, that video, have it, bring it back to you. Cause even that takes a good hour and a half off of editing, you know, if you're trying to really focus in, so let them do that and then add your, uh, add your detailed stuff in afterwards. Um, Yeah. You know, I I like that. Um, Cause I have some like animations that I like editing and I mm-hmm. haven't quite figured out how to get those animations over to the editor so he can add them. And so, yeah, for a couple of videos, I just let him just say, hey, man, just give me a raw basic video. Just take this hour worth of footage, chop it down in 20 minutes. And then I mm-hmm. added all these special graphics that I have. And so that that's really helped me out a lot. Actually, I've been able to put out more content because of that. Then another thing I did is, um, so on my outdoor channel, I do these unboxing videos of this monthly subscription service. Mm-hmm. And I used to film it and I used to get B-roll shots of every single item and then um, edit it and it'd take me forever. And then this last time I was like, yeah, let me just do this live. And I just mm-hmm. did a live unboxing and it got almost the exact same amount of views as if I would have put all this time and energy in making a produced video unboxing it. So that one series, I'm just going to turn into a live series maybe once a month now instead. Well, I kind of like that idea better to tell you the truth, because when you look at a lot of unboxing videos, they're trying to make them so fancy. You're like, yeah. did you even open this? I mean, did you open it ahead of time? Like, what what did you do? Yeah. But I, if it was me, I would want to see somebody like open that Amazon box, you know, pull out all the peanuts and <laughs> everything that comes with it. And you could like totally make a joke out of like how much packaging you need for one tiny pocket knife, you know, like really. Yeah. You know? And you, I think that's more engaging. It's kind of like I like watching my kids unwrap Christmas presents. I like to see their face, their genuine reaction at that moment when they're opening it. That makes sense to me for a live stream for your type of content. That does make sense from that angle. If I can show it's fully taped up, I haven't seen it yet. You're actually opening it up with me, um, a little bit more authentic. Do you have two camera angles? Do you have two camera angles? No, I haven't done that. So I would, this is what I would do. Mm. I would have, two, I would ha- get like another webcam. So you can have one going straight over top of you. So you could like, they could see right over top of you and then have another one going right towards your face. I like that idea. Um, and I actually bought this boom arm that attaches to the wall <laughs> and juts out. So you can have a camera looking directly down. I just yep. haven't done that yet. Um, so I was using StreamYard for that. Do you th- can you do two camera angles using StreamYard, yes. you think? So you can do like, look, so I can... If you go into your uh, settings oh. and you go to camera, and you could just say, "Hey, let, I'm going to go ahead and switch this over." And now Streamyard, if you have the uh, uh, like opt package, there you can use something called Stream Deck within Streamyard, and that has different buttons. Like a, this is the Stream Deck, right? And so you can use these buttons to go to different camera angles within Streamyard. Uh, Streamyard. Oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. So I think they even have an app, I think, that you can use the app for that same feature. 
Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. So if you you like kick click on the cog wheel and it says camera, and you'll can see the two different types of cameras that you have. If you once you connect them, I have another camera connected. It's uh, but I have to take it in. Like I have this camera and I, I had it on um, uh, a tripod here, and I was like, oh, I need another camera for this specific video I was shooting, and I, you know took video, brought it back home. And then I went to go set it up. And now there's like this weird halo cloudy look to this camera. And so I need to have it looked at, but I don't know where to take it to, you know, like, who do you, who do you take this to? How, yeah. Um, I don't know. And yeah, I, I got to think about that with the, the, so do I really want another camera? I'm like this camera. Now I have a, a cable running to my laptop. So I'd have to have a, an extra long cable, I guess, for that top down one, wouldn't you? Yeah, but you can get a like, a, like, because you're doing it this way, you can use something as simple as a GoPro, or you can even get like, uh, a webcam is less yeah. than $100. I mean, they're webcam cheap. may be a good idea. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm using a webcam, because my camera yeah. that I use for live streams has got garbage. It's garbage. But yeah, but if you have a GoPro, you can connect, connect those. You can use a GoPro for uh, okay, live streams. So this too. is what I got uh, a while ago. Another YouTube friend of mine told me about it. And so yeah, he uses this and mounts into your wall. And then you can totally adjust this. You've got a little boom arm on the end. Uh, yeah, I love that idea for my live unboxings. Just kind of position it just out of frame, I guess. So it's like up here and you can't really see it. Your boom can get so long there, Malcolm. It sure can. Wow. That's it impressive. Sure can. <laughs> I can't help myself. I cannot help myself. <laughs> so you, you didn't want to curse on the live stream. <laughs> but I can be window, totally so. inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> no cursing. A family friendly, friendly show. show. <laughs> Sexual in the windows, though. Yeah, go for it. All right. I have You're the a, one who had to pull out your boom. That's no, not man. My Is fault. it so large? I had to show somebody. <laughs> Yeah, it's epic. It, it doesn't get much use these days. You yeah, know? I, I hear you. Know. Know. All right, we got some questions here. Uh, I'm getting ready to drop six videos. Home buyer series. You suggest dropping them all at once or cover over time? Cover over time. Don't oversaturate the algorithm. Hundred like, percent. Yep. Do not do that. And like, I hear people are like, "Oh, I have this great idea, and I'm going to put the three out, like one in the morning, one in the yeah. afternoon, and then one in the evening, so that way there's time between it." Like nobody, no one gives a. I'm sorry, nobody cares about your buyer series. Uh, you know, like they're not going to sit there for six hours watching all your stuff. I'm sorry, but they will if they're, uh, you know, like if they ha if it's already in a playlist, they'll they'll do it. But you know, they'll come back week after week, let it breathe, let YouTube do its thing, you know? And I'll also tell you, if you're doing a buyer's series, right? Um, I would do it once a week, but you're going to have to not use, you can, you can still even exhaust the algorithm with that. Like a series to me shouldn't be any more than like three or four videos. And if you're going to put them out uh, like once a week or you have one go out the net one day and the one go out the next day, make it a real reason that they want to come back and see that next video. Like to me, a series has to be, there's something so amazing that happened in that first video. I can't wait to see the next video that comes out the following day. You know, like I have to know what happens. If that isn't the case, then just do once a week and make sure they follow in line with each other. Yeah. Yeah. I, you I, have to give them a reason to watch that next video. Yeah, I agree with all that. Um, and, and another angle to consider is like, let's say you're one of your subscribers and you see a how to buy a home video. Maybe you'll watch it, but, and maybe let's say it's a five, 10 minute long video, but if there's six of them and it's like two hours worth of content, there's no way you're going to sit there and watch two hours worth of content all about home buying. If it shows up in your subscription feed, which means you're missing out on potential views from your subscribers because you're totally overwhelming them with that much content. I would I would just schedule them. If you have six videos, up them, them all, schedule them. You know, kind of spaced out over the next. Um, I'd say I mean I'd say next month or two. I know Christina like spreading them out. What twenty one days? Is how long you like to spread your videos out? Well, I do. Uh, yeah, it's about that. I have like my playlist that I kind of feed the machine to, and I I um, I'll like at the beginning of the month I do one specific video for that playlist and then I'll do the next week and the next week and the next week, but they have always feeding different playlists each week. 
So I kind of want to see something now. Jeremy is saying that Mr. Beast, um, his intro of his last video was crazy in the first 30 seconds. All right, let's take a look at it. Okay, okay, let me pull it up here. I'm going to pull it up. This All is right, a live let's... react. Live reaction. I haven't even watched the video yet. So let's let's watch the first 30 seconds, see what we can learn about how to hook somebody's attention. Holy crap. Almost 140 million views in like a week and a half. Yeah. All right. And it all comes down to those first 30 seconds. Let's see how he hooks us. I recreated every single step from the Squid Game in real life. And whichever one of these 456 people survives the longest wins 456 grand. The first team we're going to play is Red Light, Green Line. And they have 30 minutes to cross the red line on the other side of the room. So without further ado, Green Light. I love it. 19 seconds. He's already into the content. Yeah. Look how much transitions were in that first 19 seconds. I mean, you couldn't even count them all. <laughs> there, yeah. there had to have been at least eight minimum transitions of all the things. Yeah. And you notice he didn't say, hey, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on MrBeast.com and order my cheeseburger. Yeah, order my cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah, well, he's he really is a YouTube genius. And it all started from a kid that was sitting there and he all he did, his first like major viral video is he said the word, uh, the name PewDiePie. Like, I think it was like, I'm not going to stop uh, saying the word PewDiePie until I've said it, uh, I think, a million times. So he just yeah. went PewDiePie, PewDiePie, PewDiePie. And he just, he literally, I think he did it on a live stream. That's and crazy. He just constantly said it. Yeah, and then there's another one where he took a, an Uber ride from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast, and it's just crazy ideas. And he's a great example of showing how the concept of the video is the most important thing mm -hmm. and why you can't make a video about escrow accounts and expect it to get views on, on YouTube. You have to come up with a really cool concept, a really cool angle for your videos. Do you know what is interesting to me? What's that? Is that... I watch, you know, like you, when you think of TV, you think of like how many people really are watching that television show. You're thinking there's got to be millions of people watching that television show. And something like uh, Mr. Beast quadruples the views of a lot of very popular television shows. And that's why, uh, you know, he's making the money that he makes. I mean, like, of course. And I know that it makes these executives at television uh, firms really ticked that, you know, they can't pull the same views as some really smart kid on YouTube. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it, it is pretty wild that they can spend millions of dollars to make a Netflix series. And then Mr. Beast can make a video of him in his bedroom saying a name a hundred thousand times and get just as many views on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It, it's pretty, and this is, this is like the, YouTube is competing with Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime. Like we're a direct competitor to those platforms, mm -hmm. and, and more and more people are switching over to YouTube content. And I think it's also why um, I think TV is the fastest growing platform on YouTube. You know, slowly the TV is going to be a bigger and bigger um, source of streaming it, and then mm -hmm. uh, the, our content is getting longer as well in order to compete with those series. So uh, this gentleman says, editing is so hard. I have tried to hire out several times, but I always end up going back and doing it myself. Yep. Yep. It's, it's tough, man. The struggle is real. Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> it's so, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Yeah. I've done it. I'm like, and I think the thing to do, honestly, if, if, you know, if you're crunched for time and everything, like the worst part for me is like taking down that initial big chunk of video and bringing it all the way down. So if you could take that first chunk of video in order of how you want it to be set up, send it to a place like video Husky, you know, have them take it down say, don't put any B roll or anything else on there. Just, just take it down, you know, like bring this, you know, 45 minutes down to like, I don't know, good 10 to 12 minutes and let them do that. Then you take that video and then add your, your, uh, I would say gingerbread to it to make your it more interesting. Sauce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I'm on my third editor now that I've tried in the last like month. And he, today, actually, I got my first video back from him that didn't need any revisions. And I can't tell you how excited I am because I make like 20 minute long videos. 
-hmm. And I, 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 my first editor, I had to watch 20 minute long videos three times and every single time there's all these mistakes in it. And it's like, you're not even saving me any time here. I know. And, and so I'm at the point where I have one specific series that I trust this guy with and he can actually he gave me his very first video. I didn't need any revisions. So I'm pretty excited about that. My, this is my newest, uh, edition. Hey, he can't hear. I got earphones on, All but right. he, he pops into some of my videos sometimes and I'm, I leave it. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? Years ago, I would have been like, Oh my God, get the cat out of here. Oh my God. He's That'd ruining my video. That'd be perfect. Now I'm like, leave the cat. I don't care. Let him, let him do his thing. Though, you know, if it's on a live stream, people love it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Ooh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't do it. The cat did. Freaking cat. So he, uh, going back to his buyer series, they're ranging between four and nine minutes. Yeah, it's definitely too much to upload all in one day. Let's see. 14 cameras changes in 19 seconds. I, I, Jeremy counted it. That's almost a, a cut every second. And, and a lot of YouTubers do this. They have far more cuts at the very start. And then it kind of slows down as you get to the end of the video, just to get their attention. My cat's behind the camera, so it keeps moving. <laughs> <laughs> are his burgers available across country? They are. I yeah. don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't it's, know. It's it's some kind of weird model where he just has the recipe, and all these different places are making his burger. Different companies make the burger. They just have to follow his recipe for it. Speaking of burgers, so I saw the most epic uh, TikTok series that out, and then it turned out to be the biggest disappointment. So there's this guy, he's a comedian, his name's Kyle Sheely, right? And he comes up with this idea uh, on um, TikTok where he's gonna, he had kept dropping by at his gas station, his local gas station. And he noticed there was these like cardboard cutouts. You know, sometimes it would be Dale Earnhardt. Sometimes it would be like Dolly Parton. It didn't matter. It was always a cardboard cutout. And uh, so he was like, I'm just going to put a cardboard cutout of myself there. Right. And of course, I'm going to make it look like an advertisement. So he was his name is like <laughs> Kyle Shealy. So he's like, I'm going to make this Kyle Shealy. And, and it, it was like, go ask for the Kyle Shealy meal. So he was going to. You know, so he did this, right? So he has his friends make this cardboard cut it of himself. It ends up being way bigger than he anticipated. <laughs> so he brings it in there and he's like, okay, I didn't get caught, right? So everybody was like, oh my God, this is hysterical. So it, it, the video kind of goes viral and people were coming in and go, and they had moved the cutout towards the, like the, the snack food place and they were getting pictures and videos of it. And they asked the people behind the counter, what's the Kyle Shealy meal? And they're like, we have no idea that just showed up fast forward. The, the, uh, the chain of, um, hold, hold on. So, so he's putting it in like random gas stations. He put it in, in his local gas station because he thought it'd be funny, right? Okay, so, he, so so like the cashiers there, they don't know. They thought the yeah, owner or something put nobody it Nobody knows what the hell this is. It's just all of a sudden shows up. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes so viral because it's like on Reddit. It's on, you know, Twitter and everything. He says that the, it's, the chain is called Come and Go. The Come and Go calls him and says, hey, um, we saw your cardboard cutout. It's become kind of a thing. So I think the right thing to do right now is to go ahead and create a meal for this. He's like, really? They're like, yeah. What do you think of the like the Kyle Shealy mealy? He was like, sounds like a perfect marketing. So he comes up with this sandwich was just two pieces of pizza that are folded over on top of each other. Red Bull gets involved. They have the Red Bull. You can get a two piece of pizza and a Red Bull for X amount of dollars for the Kyle Shealy mealy. So he, you know, does this whole thing, right? It was like ever like, guys, I may have gone too far. Oh, wait, qu pause it. Because this is the part that gets people totally ticked okay let's hear it so he prefaced all of this that come and go had no idea what he was doing that he had created this that it was like he did he had no idea the company had no idea and it wasn't a setup it was all fake everything oh. everything i was so mad and and i i think i i honestly think they can get in trouble because he never tagged the company in any of his videos prior to it coming out that he got busted oh okay so 
they were in on it. Yeah, so this was an endorsement, essentially, or sponsorship from the company, and he didn't, wasn't transparent about it. Correct. Yep. Yeah, that's a little shady. Yeah, that's that's not allowed anymore. You have to yeah. be pretty transparent, or at least on YouTube. Um, I, actually, I think maybe like the FEC or F. F I, I think there's a lot FCC, of laws yeah. against that about about yep. that now as well. I think I I don't think I think he's in trouble. I think him and Come and Go are in trouble because he never tagged the company in those original videos. It does not have a hashtag or anything in it. Um, oh, well, that's too bad. This would have been pretty funny if it was real. I mean, it was, funny. It's, it was funny, but if he had prefaced that, like they had told me I had creative reign to do this. They have no idea what I'm doing, but so I'm going to, I'm going to. Oh, right. It. Right. Yeah. That would have made more sense. Right. Um, because he said that I talked to them and they gave me creative reign and this is what I came up with, but he didn't make it sound like that he had like talks with them and, and everything, you know, like he, he made it seem like they had no idea about it. And then he, now he's backpedaling like, Oh, well they, I had creative reign. They didn't know what I was going to do. I just had to do something by this specific date. I'm like, dude, yeah, dude, you got to be more transparent with that. That's a big thing right now is um, there's all kinds of, you know, there's definitely a history of creators not being transparent that they're mm -hmm. getting paid to promote a product mm -hmm. or maybe they, they have ownership in the product or something like that. Yeah, that's why some creators have gone as far as when they know they're not getting paid by a specific brand, they put tape over their logos and stuff because they, they're like, you're not paying me. So <laughs> right. I'm not showing you your logo, you know. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready to jump into some uh, channel reviews? Let's jump. Let's let's jump. Woo. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see if I can get this. Crisscross will make you jump, jump, jump. <laughs> Malcolm Lawson will make you jump, jump. <laughs> All right. Helping families explore and live in Orange County. Bin win. Let's, let's go. So very first thing is you need to go and customize the playlist on your homepage. So mm -hmm. it actually looks like you have more content by default. Mm -hmm. There's only one playlist and you need to go into customize channel and then you can add playlists. And that's how you curate the content on your homepage. Let's uh, let's check out his channel trailer. Hi, my, my name, name is Ben Wynn and welcome to my YouTube, YouTube channel. channem I'm a realtor here in sunny Southern California and I'll be posting videos here once a week. You learn tips on the home buying process, how to get your home ready for as a seller, and hyper local market updates. Be sure to subscribe for new content and comment below to introduce yourself. Is that an echo on our end or is that an echo? On oh, are you hearing an echo? Maybe because I'm playing the video and then my microphone's picking it up or something. Oh, so the you mute your microphone, Mr. Man. Oh, okay. So let me, let me try this. Let me. Oh. Yeah, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with his uh, intro. It, it, does it make me go, yay? No. It's just, yeah. it's just kind of like, Hey, this is me. Yeah. I think like you could add some B roll to it, you know, take some clips a little more of sexy. your videos and kind of spice it up a little bit and mm -hmm. keep our attention. Add a little um, salsa, but it's good that you have it. You have a decent intro. It fully explains the value proposition of your channel, who your audience is. I love that you have all your contact information right beside it as well. So it's easy to find when somebody first finds your channel. Uh, let's see how much content you have here. Okay. I have a question. Do you really believe that a channel trailer does anything for a channel? Uh, so that's, that's a tricky one. Um, <laughs> it, I think for real estate agents, I think it can. If somebody wants to know, I don't know. I think for real estate agents, it can, right? And especially if you have your contact information in there. But for bigger channels, um, on my outdoor channel, I don't have a channel trailer. I have just one of my most popular videos playing uh, on my channel as my channel trailer what do you what do you have in yours i do i do not use the channel trailer i never did because i'm not like i'm with, like there's the biggest channels on the planet do not use channel trailers why well because people are there to watch videos and they i don't think anybody really cares on who you are honestly and yeah. I, if you deliver them good content and even every single video they're they don't care what your trailer is i i don't i know that i know i i know it's gonna be hard for people to accept that but nobody really cares who you are 
and they don't until you give them something that they want, which is really good content or information about a specific area. And then they'll hunt you down on social media sites that you didn't even know that or existed. Right. Yeah. Like somebody like Jeremy Knight. Um, I mean, he, he, you know, he stopped putting his contact information or anything in his videos or having any call to action. Got to agree. Um, I, I would say, I think I see more channel trailers with businesses than anything, just big creators. I don't really see them that often these days. It, it's kind of fallen out of style, but I think with businesses, um, I think you see them a little bit more often, but, uh, let's take a look. So, um, helping families explore and live in Orange County. I think your banner is perfectly fine. I think it clearly expresses what the value is of your channel. I'm, uh, I'm a, I want to ask though, and I haven't seen it. Is the words like like the last uh, letters of the word like families where it looks like lies and or in? Is that what's showing up on mobile? I'm going to look. Okay. Oh, it, is it cutting it off? Like it's going right. to be like in families. Yeah. Oh, why didn't I pick up on that? You're 100% correct about that. Yeah. Um. On Yeah, you're 100% right. That, let that, me look. All right. Let me, let me pull up my, my real estate channel just to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about. And I, uh, another thing while you're doing that, I, I, and it's come to my attention even through this group that sometimes the um, NAR has been cracking down on people that use the word realtor in their channel names on their Facebook pages. I've seen it with one person in here. I've seen it a lot in my local area of people on their Facebook business pages because they use the word realtor on their Facebook page and they tell them to take it down. Just, oh, just FYI. Yeah you're not allowed to use that designation in your and, um yeah i yeah you got to be careful with that um and every 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 like state is a little bit different about all that stuff as well like if you have to display your your broker's contact information or what but it fits yeah, you, go ahead it fits oh good it, yeah i just want i wasn't sure so yeah it does fit it says families in orange but it, that's it it says families explore and live in orange Oh, instead that, of helping families mm -hmm. explore and live orange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, if you look at mine, I have everything kind of compressed in the very center mm -hmm. just to make sure that shows up in mobile. And then this powered by real and search for Maryland homes that only shows up on desktop. Mm -hmm. So you said it just says families explore yeah. and live in orange. Yeah. In orange. So it cuts off helping and counting. Yeah. It, it would make. Yeah. And majority of reviews come from mobile devices. And like see across, if, across YouTube. And if it was me and I was telling you and giving you advice on your uh, YouTube channel, since you asked for it, I would move your image off to like the right hand side. And then all I would do, all my banner would say is helping families in Orange County, period. That's your value statement. That's it. That yeah. is your statement. Mm -hmm. And leave it at that. Explore and live. No, you're helping families in Orange County. I like that. Yes. I think, I think that's much more concise. Um, mm -hmm. And it totally works. Mm -hmm. so let's take a look um yeah so your thumbnails like you're doing a lot of things right mm -hmm. you know nice big face um not too much text it's pretty easy to read mm -hmm. i think you're doing a lot of things right with these um i like that you don't have your face in all of them because sometimes it doesn't always make sense too but i'm going to tell you something that i learned about like a seven million dollar home so don't cover up the house right mm -hmm. you covered up the seven million dollar house with a bunch of words why would you do that what you really want to do is put the word 7 million behind the house. So the house is front and center. That is the feature that people really want to see in a video. So let me show you something. Um, so Brad McAllen, right? He does pretty much nothing but see. listen to videos. See? Yeah. And he's, after a long time, he figured out what works well for the click through rate on these videos. And he does just the number of the house or the, the, the price of the house. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if anybody's out there doing listing videos, I would emulate this style right here. And if you go back, you know, a couple of years ago, he was doing much more creative stuff, you know, with his thumbnails and he just figured out like, you know what, just throwing the price up on there. That's what works really well. Mm -hmm. And so let me go back to his, where was it? Yeah. Take out the million home and just put 700 million, just put the number 700 million. Um, I think that would get a lot of people's attention and it's a 58 second video. It's pretty tricky. Um, let's take a look at your, some of your titles. So new sunset beach home. Yeah. I mean, that could get a lot, 
you can make that a little bit clickier. Um, what Brad does is he does something like inside this seven hundred seven million dollar sunset. Look, I would, yeah, like look inside this seven million dollar. Yep, uh, sunset beach home. Yeah, look I inside that that he he's also really kind of narrowed down what titles work really well. Mm -hmm. um, or some people they try to pick out like some feature of the home and highlight that in their title. You know, beachfront it, views. Something or like if they have some strange bathtub or some something like that, you know. It's California State Parks in Orange County. I'd spice that up a little bit. Best California State Parks. Mm -hmm. California State Parks you should know about. My favorite California State Parks. Add some adjectives in there. Pros and cons of living in Hunting Beach. That works. Um, housing slowdown. Home selling tips. Again, yeah, these are these are. Like home selling tips, this is a label. You got to create a headline for that. You know, home selling tips your real estate doesn't even know about. Home selling tips that'll sell you, that'll save you ten thousand dollars. You know, all these mortgage rate updates. Spice that up. You know, urgent mortgage mm -hmm. rates have changed. Do this now. Um, yeah, I'd say your titles could. A lot of these titles could use some spicing up because they, they kind of read like an encyclopedia. Yeah. This title's not bad, and it's got one of your most popular videos. You yeah, know, two thousand views. Let's let's see what are your most popular videos. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, your top tens. Yeah. So I would, if you're if you top tens, I would I would kind of think, uh, you know how you say pros and cons. Instead of doing that, why don't you say five things you didn't know about living in Hunting Beach, right? And that you could have like a a playlist you have top 10 things that could be a playlist and then another one could be five things about living in and then you would have a playlist of that because obviously numbers work well on your channel yeah uh i think and i think she's right like you're picking up a trend here your most popular videos are top tens about your area uh i think you found a bucket right there make that a series on your channel and once a month maybe even more often uh, do a top 10 video about your area. Mm -hmm. Top 10 must-see parks in here. Top 10 beaches. Top 10 things to do. Thing, date night destinations. Packs. Mm -hmm. I like a pack. What? <laughs> packs. I'm, I'm from New England, so when you say packs. <laughs> packs. Oh, <okay. laughs> That's what we say. We can pack the car. <laughs> Yeah. And then like 2021 mortgage rates. Yeah. So like a lot of these, you, you really got to craft your titles and really spend time thinking about it. And um, see, so, yeah, if it was me is like what you don't know about the 2022 mortgage rates. Yeah. yeah. Five, five things uh, about 22's, 2022's mortgage rates that no one's telling you. So let's just compare your title, 2021 mortgage rates. And let's take a look at some of Christina Smallhorn's titles. Um, very costly investment mistakes of modular homes. What's mm -hmm. going to change in the 2022 housing market? That was a live stream. Yeah. I, I guess a better title. Um, stop with lying about the housing market, mm -hmm. yeah, possible home affordability, the hot housing market days are numbered. You know, if you had something like that with that video, I think <laughs> that you saw the cat jumped on that, <laughs> <laughs> that freaking cat. <laughs> All over the place. You got to put like a shelf behind you, uh -huh. and just so that the cat can sit on there. <laughs> I got a cat uh, condo behind me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and watch one of your videos here and um, take a look. Let me watch your most recent one. I was like, I don't want to watch my videos. I've already yeah. <laughs> edited them to death. I'm sick of my own voice. <laughs> All right. So let's see if you have as many cuts and as good of a hook as Mr. Beast does. Nobody does. I'm sorry. <laughs> Huntington Beach is a great city. And if you're thinking I'm moving here, Mute here's a list mic. of pros and cons. All right, let's, let's see. Yeah, let's see if I can figure this out. So yeah, I... Mute your mic. Hit mute on your mic. There you go. Do that. ...to help you decide. The first pro is the endless outdoor activities. Being sunny Southern California, you have a ton of things to do. Activities such as bike riding the beach trail. It's yeah, okay. You got into it really quickly, which is great. Yeah. That's like within like 10 seconds, you're into the content already. 
Yeah, I, I like it. Yeah, I think not that's, bad at all. That's really what you want to do is just get into it really quickly. I would yeah, say this is more consistent, more consistency. I'd make your videos a little longer too, more than more than five minutes. Because yeah. either you're going to do, because I saw that you had one that was less than a minute. So either you're going to be a shorts channel that does shorts content that is very similar to TikTok, or you're going to do long videos that are probably over eight minutes long. You're going to have more success with that on real estate channels. I've noticed that the most successful real estate channels have videos that are way over eight minutes. Oh, Huntington Beach is a great city. And if you're thinking of moving here, here's a list of pros and cons to help you decide. So I would say like that you could spice up that hook a little bit. So Huntington Beach is a great place to live. And if you're thinking about moving here, here's a list of pros and cons that you could definitely spice that up. You know, mm -hmm. um, Huntington Beach is a fantastic destination for many people. However, there are some things that you really need to know about if you're considering moving here. Today, I'm going to run through the no BS pros and cons of living in Huntington Beach. Love that. Something that's a, like that. That's wicked hooky. I like it. Yeah, and I feel like if you would have started off with that, that really would have gotten my attention. And then I think, and I love that you're, instead of having like a branded video intro and everything, you just have a lower third. I think that's great. I would add your contact information to that lower third as well. Christina says no, but. <laughs> All right, so let's see, what else? Uh, let's see how you end the video as well. All right, I'm gonna try muting my computer, my speakers. That worked though when you muted mute the microphone. It's kind of a pain in the neck though. Oh, don't be a baby. If you're considering moving here, if you have any questions, please comment or direct message me. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, how many more seconds? Sorry, what's that? He had to, like, so he had at least another five seconds where he didn't say anything. So he, the people have already clicked off the video. He didn't introduce another video. That's what right. I would have done. I would have I would have introduced a different video. So right here, people are backing out of the video and you still have another. Yeah, you have it like six seconds. Mm -hmm. of this kind of dead air, air time. Um, yeah, yeah. I would have said, hey, yeah, now that you've seen the pros and cons. Now, you know what the pros and cons are of living in Huntington Beach. Check out my video right here, breaking down the 10 most fun things to do with kids here in Huntington Beach. Mm -hmm. Something something like that. Um, and then. I would have had that lower third again with your contact information. Then I would have done it. Not yeah. at the beginning, but that's just me. Um, and I do see that you do have your contact information in the description, um, which is good. I for, Okay, let's talk about your description. Um, it's good you're doing one paragraph. That's typically what I do. I would have other links in there to other playlists, maybe other videos. Um, I like having call to actions associated with my contact information. So like schedule free consultation or call let's talk real estate and then have your phone number or search for homes instead of the same website search for Huntington Beach homes something along those lines mine does say that like looking for a referral in your area contact me here looking for a collaboration on one of my videos click here that's what mine says what do you think about his video quality man I think that background is great great yeah yeah he's sh he's smoking like like most people like now it's good I like it, man. You got a nice, you got your key light. You got a little bit of a red, like fill light there. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, yeah. I will say that I would like his image to be a little bit brighter on his thumbnails. He had yes. one image that looked really good. And then all, like, th look, it says have kids. See that how well that is lit. His face is lit. And all the other ones aren't nearly as bright and lit as well as that one specific thumbnail. Right. I 100% I agree with that. How, yeah, this one. Compared yeah, the, to this one, and it's because you're taking and even the one next, shots. and then the one next to it, even that, like he, like he almost looks like he's in the a closet, like a dark closet when he took that picture. <laughs> that's yeah. holding slow, slowing down, and then this California state, like they're not bright and crisp and clear. I'll tell you, you this, a, yeah. I was, you, you, I, I was gonna tell you, him a good uh, app. Uh, uh, sorry, I, good. Shut up, Malcolm. Now listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies first. Ladies okay, first. well, perfect. Yep, chivalry is not dead. Now, listen, there's an app, a free app, and I tell everybody about this app all the time. And everybody, like, they're like, how do you get your thumbnails to look so crisp? So if I have a, 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 a photo like this and it's not like my face is dark and everything else, you can take that photo and stick it 
into an app called Snapseed, completely 100% free. You take that uh, image from your phone, you upload it to, let's say, Snapseed. Here, I got this picture of me in a big bowl, right? So you, they have all these tools right here, and you can boost up the clarity and the sharpness. That would structure and sharpening. I boost that up to about 25. That immediately starts to show all the details and the strands of my hair and uh, brightens up my eyes instantly, right? Then I have that. Then you go over to tools again, and then you go tune image. Once you do that little tune image, they have all these different little features in tune image. They have saturation, ambience, highlights, shadows, warmth. So you can, you can, uh, oh, and your brightness. So you could take that brightness that you have, you take that brightness in there and uh, uh, bring it up a little bit, right? And then you can adjust all those things. Snapseed is 100% free and everybody should be using it for their images on your thumbnails. If you want to know why mine looks so crisp and clear, this is it, Snapseed. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I, I'm very happy with Snapseed as well. Um, and I, so I have Photoshop. It's far easier for me to make my video, my images look fantastic in Snapseed than it is Photoshop. Like mm -hmm. to increase the sharpness of Photoshop, it's, it's real pain in the neck. And I don't even know if I'm doing it right, um, but with Snapseed, this is so easy. And so sometimes I'll find images from my thumbnails on my phone, edit them in Snapseed, and then put them in the Google Drive, and then import them into Photoshop so I can make my thumbnail with them. I um I, I even like I use a program called PicMonkey. I know a lot of people do, and they do have sharpening and contrast and all that in PicMonkey, but it washes out your image. It really makes oh. your image look like total poop. So that's why I started using Snapseed because it really makes that image look so crisp. And once you transfer it over to to um, oh, to you. PicMonkey, it's so easy. Just trying to show everybody what the icon looks like. It's that little green leaf right over there. Yeah. And Peter McKinnon actually uses this. He uses it for his Instagram photos, supposedly. I don't, I don't doubt it. I don't. Yeah. My my brother, who is a professional photographer he's won awards and everything he that's what he does he uses snapseed <laughs> he didn't even tell me about it yeah. and, and he says like there are all those features if you have an iphone within iphone but it's a lot of playing and trying to figure it out this clearly states easily what you need like you need it to be brighter here you know i would love if they had a web-based version of that i can do on my computer instead of my phone um, we were trying to figure that out the other day, and I, I don't think you can. I think you, I, unless I got like an emulator on my computer to emulate a phone, then I can install it or something. I don't know. I might do that. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. All right. Well, I think we're at the one hour mark. That went by really quickly, man. We had a lot of stuff to chat about today. I know. I love to talk about the YouTubes. I talked way too much. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I know. No, I mean, I'm the same way. I, I've been really motivated this past week. I, 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 I'm so close to just being a full-time YouTuber. Like, I feel like in the next like six months, I can really like achieve that. And uh, I've been really just hustling these last few weeks. And I finally got a nice little rhythm going and I'm motivated. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having fun with YouTube. I should do a mini course on using PicMonkey and creating epic thumbnails for real estate. That's what I should do. You what could. do you think, Malcolm? I think you should. Yeah, I think I should too. I think I should too. What do you guys think? You let me know in the comment section below. <laughs> you want a course on thumbnails from the Christina Smallhorn. Oh yeah. Because everyone wants to know how I do them. Love it, guys. I love Bird. Yeah, we have some fun. really cool people in our group, man. Like there's some people that make me laugh. <laughs> and I love that. Burns crushing it out there in San Diego too. I have uh, agents that talk to me and they show me Burns channel and they're like, man, I want a channel like this. Well, yeah, yeah, I know. I Burns. know that dude. I know I've, that I've met him face to face. So I've got a course. Yeah, I got a course all about YouTube. YouTubeleadgen.com is where you can find it. You can find some free training on there as well. And uh, I think we've been hounding Christina to make a course about thumbnails for, for a while now. Yeah, now I'm actually like, my brain is free. I don't, I'm not worried about the end of the world anymore. So I think I'm, I'm in that mode. I think Christina is about to say yes. Because I was thinking about it last night. I said, like, I should jump in front of that camera and just show people how I do it. You could. Duh. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Christina steps away from the caffeine. <laughs> no. You're, you're all jacked up in caffeine. You better do it now, Christina. Just start knocking it out. Yeah. You know, here's the thing. Everybody's like, oh, how much coffee do you drink? I'm like, never. I don't drink coffee. <laughs> oh, my God. These dogs. 
who's the guy who runs the master thumbnails um group um that was jeremy vest and then another guy took it over but jeremy vest uh he's he's very good at thumbnails he um yeah. i think Does he worked he... for a design company when it came to skateboards before he got into um thumbnails and if you look at uh roger wakefield who's a plumber many real estate agents know who he is because he speaks at a lot of real estate conferences but uh, i believe jeremy best does all of his thumbnails i could be completely wrong but i'm pretty sure that's what roger has i think said. so too because i think i've seen people posting like a couple of thumbnails asking for feedback like mm -hmm. on his channel in that group mm -hmm. not, does he have a course or something or does he just try to get business from that group Jeremy, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I have like not a free PDF or something that you can download. He oh, no. did work for vidIQ for a period of time. Then I believe he left just to work for another skateboard company. Um, I know he was like on a new adventure and everything because I remember Daryl posting something about it about it like two years ago. Um, but I think he always has his hand in YouTube. And I'm, like I said, I believe he's uh, like someone you can hire for consultations and uh, consultings and and stuff like that and training i don't know for sure i think so uh, too. i think that's I think, uh, I think that's what it is that may be his angle because i think he does thumbnails for a lot of big creators mm -hmm. uh, doesn't it all right is that our outro dance no i no, i just dance that's just your dance <laughs> i just do a little dance just dance yeah oh that was a good song back in the day hey beautiful guru <laughs> Oh my gosh, Sir Guru, what are you doing? What you doing, my friend? <laughs> Many courses for thumbnails would be great. And you know, I, you know how many people? I'm in Daryl's course right now. Your your life is about to change. <laughs> That's all I can say. And everything that you think you know about YouTube, just go ahead and throw that in the garbage because your brain is about to explode. You know nothing. <laughs> You've now taken the what was it the red pill. <laughs> Love seeing you on early, yay! <laughs> yeah, Daryl's got a good course. Um, I think yeah. it's five thousand. I'm still in there. I still have access to it. Um, I need to get back, get more active uh, in there. I think from his, his the biggest thing I took away from him his course is just these the buckets of content and creating series. You figure out what works well for that series and you just kind of stick with it. Yep. Yeah. But you but there's a there's a there's a life expectancy, you know? So you mm. may think you have it all down, right? You've been doing the research, you've you've done it all, you're like, yeah, this is this is working. This is what's making my channel. And then all of a sudden it all you know, it's all the ends right then there. Market crash videos are not gonna last forever. No, they're not. And I, and that's, I, I, that was my biggest curiosity of what is going to happen to these channels that have exploded yeah. in the last year since the beginning of the pandemonium. What's going to happen to those channels that, uh, that like literally every, every video is housing market crash, housing market bubble, housing market inflation rates. So housing, I've noticed that a couple of them have started to use, other like it isn't just housing market they're starting to do things like inve uh, interest rates investments and they're adding in um like a dash of what congress is doing you know yeah so you like, gotta pivot it somehow um you're gonna have to the beginning of the uh the pandemic there are people who have whole channels just about the pandemic and updating people on it like what are those channels doing now does anybody even watch that anymore you know i'm sure they get a lot of people unsubscribing from those channels at this point yeah yeah there was there was people that were like came up out of nowhere talking about what was going to happen with the pandemic. And a couple of my new uh, just deleted their channel altogether. For me. So like I've got my, my channel is about like emergency preparedness and like the camping survival and stuff. Mm -hmm. And my rule that I, I established is I'm not going to make any predictions about the future mm -hmm. in, in my videos anymore. So no, like, Oh, the pandemic's going to strike us again next year. Or, oh, we're gonna have a housing crash or we're going to have a shortage of food like no more predictions at all for me um because this so this so hard guy, to make this guy bitboy crypto he had started a pandemonium channel right a pandem pandemic channel and it was doing it was killing it you know he was really killing it and then he pulled that out but i mean he has another youtube channel it, it's got 1.4 million subscribers I, wa I watch him daily oh you ben, do yeah ben armstrong bitboy crypto 
He's good friends with one of my friends. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, Dusty. Dusty. Yeah, no, I, I watch him daily. Um, Bit Squad. Are you guys pro real estate niche? I've already uh, have authority in a specific interior design niche. I am uh, integrating that into my real estate career. So if I was you, if it was me, I would make my channel specific to interior design and sprinkle in the fact that you're a real estate agent. My channel is about affordable housing options. Your guru said, yeah, I wish that people were talking about more affordable housing options. They happen to know I'm a real estate agent, but I'm really just specifically talking about affordable housing options. I don't talk about my specific area at all, uh, but everybody knows it because I end up inevitably naturally throughout the conversation, I will mention something about like a specific law in Louisiana or whatever. So that's what I would do. I mean, I like, I, I like that angle. Yeah. Like you mm -hmm. can do interior design. Like you don't have to make home buying tips and home selling tip videos and market update videos and interest rate videos. You don't have to make that stuff. Right. You come at this unique angle of yours of being an interior designer who's also a real estate agent. I would look at a channel called uh, like study a channel called design to the nines, right? That that's a good channel for interior design. She uh, pivoted away from real estate because her channel was doing so well. She she's still a real estate agent, but she like she really all she has to do is YouTube now. <laughs> so, yep. That's what's important. No dates, just no dates. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So I, yeah. Oh, okay. For, for like predictions, um, even like Ben Armstrong, BitBoy Crypto, he makes all his prediction is that we're going to hit a hundred thousand dollars per Bitcoin by the end of this, this year. So end of this month. Mm -hmm. Um, and now we're not going to hit that. I don't think. And he just looks like a fool. Um, and a bunch of his predictions are wrong. Oh, and, I know. Yeah. And, and I, making predictions about anything is this, it's this fear mongering and it works really well on YouTube. But it's borderline unethical, you know, saying we're going to have a housing market crash when you don't really believe it. Right. Well, and and when I had said that previously, I had said in a video that we're going to crash because it, it looked bad. You know, like the housing market, look, there was no way it could sustain itself. It looked like it was being held up by matchsticks. And then once I knew that that wasn't going to happen, I made a correction video. And you would have thought I killed somebody's baby because I changed my mind. You know, like the, it was so crazy. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I was making an assumption on the information and the data that was in front of me at that moment. I'm a good enough person to know, hey, that information and data has changed. So I'm making you an updated video on what's going on right now. And people will jump in my live streams and says, you remember when you said the housing market was going to crash? You told us not to buy a home. And I'm like, yeah. And do you remember the 18 million videos afterwards where I said I made a mistake? <laughs> people will hammer at them in the comment section now. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the, like the talking heads on TV, that's all they do is make predictions. And as long, if they got to be wrong nine times, but one of time is right. And then for years and years, like, I was right about this top of the market that one time it, it's such a game. Um, and yeah, so I don't, I'm no, no predictions for me anymore about anything in the future um, on video. So that's kind of my one rule. Yeah. Well, there's some, there's some predictions you can give without even thinking about it. Like if interest rates go up, of course, housing prices are going to go down. History has taught us that, right. you know? So something um, like that. Yeah. Like it, 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 I guess if you phrased it, if this, then this, right. That may be different saying if this it's, happens, then this happens. But you're good at saying that it's possible that this could happen. It is possible that this could happen. Somebody said, that the interest rates are going to go up into 20%. Then the next person had said, we're never going to see an entry and in, uh, increase in interest rates. And I'm like, the Fed said so. The Fed said something completely different. I'm like, I gave them 15 articles that said they're going to raise rates. Is it going to be 20%? Absolutely not. And I gave, and I, I, in this video I'm editing today, it, I gave the reasons why they're not going to make it like the 70s. You know, like what, the, what, what history hopefully has taught the Fed something. And, right. uh, yeah. So uh, interesting fact, everybody, I want you guys to go on there and look at what happened to affordable housing in Australia, right? Look at that video. It's very, it's, it's almost like a crystal ball for the United States. Very interesting. Wow. Yeah. I think, I mean, well, here I go making a prediction again, but um, <laughs> I, I think inflation is going to continue. It's going to keep getting worse and it's going to continue for several years and housing affordability is just going to get harder and harder. Cause here's the thing, like people are saying that we're, 
The CPI is 6.2%, but most likely inflation mm. is actually like 10% or higher. Yeah, absolutely. Most people, how many people out there are getting a 10% raise in the last 12 months just Nobody. to make the same amount of money that they did 12 months ago? Nobody. So even if you got a 3% raise, you're, that means you're getting 7% less money. Like, the companies are not handing out raises like that. Um, and they're making stupid mistakes too, because like my brother, my other brother, he was telling me that his job, they were like, oh, you're up for a review. We're going to go ahead and give you a 25 cent an hour raise. He's like 25 cents for an extra $5 a week. Bite me. And he went, went, went to go work for somebody else yeah. instantaneously and got $2 an hour more than he worked at his previous job. So, I mean, like, give me a break. Give you know, me a break. <laughs> they're, they're saying that we have, um, you know, millions of people unemployed, but even more job vacancies right now. And people are all complaining, oh, why don't those unemployed people go and get those jobs? Well, maybe those jobs need to adjust their pay rate 10% to just compete with inflation. If everybody's grocery bill is $100 plus every time you go, you know, a $10 an hour job is just not that appealing at the moment. I think they're, the jobless rate is actually probably a little bit worse than we, maybe a lot worse than we think because of the fact that they're, they're counting the jobless rate of how many people that are currently filed unemployment. That's how they predict, they use that number, right? There are people that have been on unemployment for the time period where they can no longer file. So right. they drop off altogether. There's plenty of families that went down to one income during the pandemic because they had to stay home with their kids. And then they couldn't find a job afterwards that paid the same rate that they have. So they decided, you know what, I'm just going to just going to be a stay at home mom, you know, like forget it. Or I'm, I'm just going to, I'll be the bus driver. You know, like the, there's a lot of people that just aren't included in that number that we don't know about. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, and same thing with the um, in inflation rate of CPI. They mm -hmm. say 6.2, that's totally manipulated information. The CPI is just a basket of products that reflect the inflation and they get to choose what items and are and are not in that basket that they're counting. I mean, the the stock price, stock S&P 500 is up 30%, home values are up 20%. Mm -hmm. How can you say interest is, inflation is only 6%? You know, it, it's it's got to be much much higher. When they said that the housing market was going to flat, flatten out, they were like, it's not going to go any higher than 13%. And then the next month, it was 16%. And they were like, oh, it exceeded our previous predictions. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so even Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, saying, oh, inflation is just transitory. It'll go away. Uh -huh. like he, he, his predictions are off. The, uh -huh. the, the top highest level economist in our country, he can't even predict what's going to happen in the market. They, anyway. you know, they, they just say things though. Yeah. They just say things in a microphone and then they, sometimes I think they're willing it to happen because they know whatever they say causes disturbance in the markets. You know, you got to have me back on your show. I'll, I'll rant and rave about inflation for hours. <laughs> People loved you. We could have you on again. Absolutely. You want to come on, uh, not this Sunday, but the following. Um, probably. All right, probably let's again. do it. Let's do it. I'll have to look at my calendar and I, I'm going to start doing a weekly live stream like you. I'm going to start doing that on my channel. You Maybe. want to be just like me, don't you? Man, I am. That I'm is so, your secret goal. Isn't uh, it? <laughs> you, you pass me subscribers. You get up to 150. 52, I'm only, 152. I'm only, I'm only at 142,000 subscribers. So. I'm 10,000 ahead of you, man. <laughs> so I started doing your meme thing. I started, I'm going to try to schedule every Monday, schedule my memes to go out every week as my mm -hmm. community post. And then I do want to do a, a weekly live stream on my channel as well and uh, just kind of chat with you. I loved your idea of having people come on who are in the middle of like some kind of natural disaster or something like a blizzard or a hurricane or something like that. Yeah. So like uh, people don't know, but Malcolm and I talked on the phone and he I said, you know, to do your live stream, you know, because you wanted something like real live and immediate. And, you know, you have real estate agents connected across the United States. So if there was some kind of natural disaster happening in my like in my area in Louisiana, we have hurricanes. There's lots of real estate agents that we know in in uh, Orlando. So he could like basically have like almost like be a, his own little news station. And they, then they could show their ways that they're preparing their house, prepping their house in order for this specific natural disaster or even after the fact what what they're doing to stay, you know, like 
hydrated and, uh, you know, like what they're using for heat, you know, lots of people in Texas, they had all that heat. You could show all those different things that they did on your channel live. That'd be killer. People would eat that up. Yeah. Jeremy says, I'm getting back into live streams again. Need to get the YouTube machine revved back up. Got to yeah. be selling homes, become a slacker. Yeah, man, like this winter, like the next few months, I just want to totally focus on YouTube. You know, everybody's businesses slow down to some degree during the winter. Like keep working 40 hours, 50 hours a week. Just put that time into YouTube instead of just hanging out. Put now, the needle on the record. Put the needle, put the on, needle the record. on the record. <laughs> All right. Well, I hate, I hate to cut off your, your dance party, Christina. I got to yeah. go. All right. Bye, Malcolm. Mike I would have stayed and talked, but Malcolm has to go because he's you want, you want Jeremy to hop on here? Um, nah, I got to go. I really do have to go. I was just giving you crap. I was just making you look bad. <laughs> we'll, we'll, do an, we'll do another one next week. Okay. See ya. Bye, everybody. Bye. Peace yeah, be I'm, with you. Yeah, you're going to dance? so bad at dancing. Yeah. You're going to do like this. When I